Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be covering cursor tracking. You can add cursor tracking to things like text or buttons or scenes to add an extra level of interactivity to your animations or designs. In this case, we're going to be adding head tracking to this character, where when we move the mouse, the character's head follows or tracks the mouse across the screen. So let's go ahead and look at how our file is set up. Over here you can see we've got our head group, and within that we've got a few groups such as the brows, the nose, the goggles, beard, the hair back, and ears. So each of these groups is going to move at varied strengths. Um, it's going to follow the cursor at different rates. So let's go ahead and look at how we would start to set this rig up. So I'm going to add a new group, and I'm going to place it towards the middle of the head, and we're going to name this Control Front, and we're going to bring that into this group, and we're going to make it a target group, and we'll go ahead and duplicate this, and for this back group, we're going to call this Control Back. Now, Control Front and Control Back are the groups that we're going to constrain all of our head, or our head object groups to. So for Control Back, we actually want this to move in the opposite direction of Control Front. So we're going to constrain it to control front with a translation constraint and set the strength to negative 100%. We're going to lock this. And now when we move our control front, you can see control back is moving in the opposite direction. So we can use that as a group to uh, constrain things like the ears or objects that are towards the back of the head so that when we move the front of the head, those objects actually move in the opposite direction. So let's look at one more thing. So we've got, um, our, you can see our origin points for all of these groups are all set to the middle of the head. We actually need to adjust our, our groups here a bit so that we've lined them up. So this way, when we add our translation constraints, our, our objects or artwork won't jump around. Um, I haven't done that with a browse yet, so let's go ahead and take a look at how we would do that. With our group selected, we'll hit Y on the keyboard and it'll bring up this freeze active window. We can now reposition our origin and hit Y again. And now all of our translations and transforms will happen around that new origin point. So now we can get back to adding our constraints and getting this set up. So we'll start with the browse and we'll add a translation constraint. And we're going to go ahead and target the control front and we're going to set this strength to something like 35. So when we move our control front group, you can see our eyebrows are moving along with it. So we can continue to do that with the nose at our translation constraint. And we'll target control front. And we'll set that to something similar, 35%. And let's go ahead and lock this. And let's try it out. So now you can see our nose and our eyebrows are moving. Now let's go ahead and look at how we would constrain these objects in the back of the head to our control back group. So with our ears selected, we'll add a translation constraint to control back. And we're just going to set this to 10%. Now, when we move our control front, or control front group, you can see the ears are moving in the opposite direction, which is exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and do the same with the sideburns or the hair and back. Constrain that to control back and we'll set that to 5%. So there we go. Things are starting to come together. Now let's go ahead and do that to the rest of the objects on the face. So we'll go ahead and constrain our nose shadow to um, we're actually going to constrain this to the nose. That way, if we make any adjustments to the nose group, we don't need to make them to the nose shadow. Um, but we still want to adjust this a tiny bit, the strength a tiny bit, so that um, it trails behind our nose just a tad. So let's continue down the line. We'll add our goggles. Add a new translation constraint to control front. And set this to 30. Same for our mustache. Front. And let's try 25. 
In our mustache shadow, we can do the same thing we did with the nose, where we'll actually constrain that to the mustache. And we'll just decrease the strength a tiny bit. Let's take a look and see what we've got. This is looking great. So let's finish up with the beard. And you can see most of these are going to be constrained to the front as most of the objects are in the front of the head. Um, so the beard, let's do 15. The blush. We'll go ahead and set that to 10. And we're going to leave the head base alone. We don't need to add any constraints to that. Although you could, but in this case, I'm going to leave that at essentially zero. Um, and then for the hair top, um, you can see that we've still got the origin um, at the base of this artwork. Um, this is because I still want to be able to animate this object um, at this location. So what we can do when we add our constraint, and we will constrain this to the control back, is we're gonna to wanna to set our strength. And then we wanna set this uh, offset. I'm gonna click that on. We'll go ahead and target control back. Now you can see, oops. Um, you can see it's moving as we would expect it, um, but we can still rotate it from this spot. So now that we've got just about everything hooked up. There are a couple more effects I'd like to add some, some translations to. Um, in the goggles, we've actually got these reflections and we're gonna add, add some constraints to those. And these are actually gonna be constrained to the control back group. And we're just gonna add about 5% strength. And we just want these to, these Reflections to move in the opposite direction a tiny bit. Um, we'll go ahead and add this other translation constraint and I'll show you what that does. So control back and 5%. And now when we move our control front, you can see those reflections are kind of moving the opposite direction, giving the idea that they're reflecting some light from you know up on the, maybe the top left of the scene. Um, one last element is the front of this little um, magnifying glass piece. So we're going to add a translation constraint to our control front. And because this is inside of this goggles group, which already has a translation and some translation strength added, we're going to just set the strength to 10%. And let's go ahead and take a look at that. That might be a bit much there. And one thing we do want to do We'll actually go ahead and undo that constraint. Um, we want to offset that. So let's add our translation again, 10%. And we want to offset because we didn't reset our origin. Offset that to control front. And let's take a look at that. That's much better. So now we've got our basic rig hooked up. Um, we can start adding some interactive elements to this. Uh, one thing we'll need to add is a hitbox, which is basically an area on the canvas that when we enter, we want to have our pointer or our cursor snap to, um, or our target snap to that pointer when it enters this space. So we're going to name this hit, and we're going to pull it into our group. And let's go ahead and hide the fill and jump over into animate mode. And in our state machine, we're going to do what with this hit box selected, we're going to add a new listener. We're going to select pointer move. So when the pointer moves in this space, the target is going to snap to our, our cursor. So we'll add a align target and the target we want is this control front. So let's take a look there. That's working great. So one thing we do want to do is um, add another control. So we're going to actually make a new group and call this cursor. And what we're, we're going to do with this is set this to target. And we're actually going to uh, constrain our control front to this cursor 
And this will let us adjust the strength or key the strength of this constraint. And that'll give us the ability to make a smooth transition when we mouse on and off of the area where our head is going to track. So we're going to set these back to regular groups and lock this. And let's go ahead and test this out. That's working great. And that means back in our hit, in our um, hit listener, we're actually going to change our align target here to cursor. So if we play this again, you can see we've got the same thing. We're just using a different group as our target. So that looks great. But one thing um, that we want to add is a nice smooth transition when we mouse in or out of this area. So for that, we're actually going to come to our timeline. And we're going to name this strength zero. And we're going to key the translation strength uh, to zero in this animation. And we're going to duplicate that, that timeline and call this one strength 50. And here we're going to set the strength to 50. So now we've got zero and 50. And we're going to need an input. Uh, this is going to allow us to toggle between strength zero and strength 50. So we'll make a new Boolean and we'll call this is tracking. And we're going to set our state machine up here by dragging the strength 50 animation on and connecting those with the transition. We're going to set this condition. If is tracking is true, we want to go from zero to 50%. And then the other way around, if is tracking is false, we're going to go back to 0%. And we're going to select both of these and add a little duration here. And now, with our hitbox selected again, we're going to create two more listeners. And here on pointer enter, we want to set is tracking to true. And then on pointer exit, we want to set is tracking to false. So now when we mouse into that hitbox area, we're going to set the tracking to true. And on mouse out, it's going to set it to false. So let's go ahead and play this and see if we've got what we want. So you can see as I mouse into that hitbox area, our head or the cursor increases in strength and starts to follow. And when we mouse out, it goes back to its starting position. So that's the basics of getting a head rigged and set up for uh, cursor tracking. You could add animations to your head, like things like the mustache twitching or the eyebrows raising um, that can play side by side with the strength animations on separate layers here. So yeah, that is the basics of head tracking in Rive.